It's time to learn how to role play another thing. <laughs> I honestly feel kind of bad because like so many of my player tips are just how to role play, but like once you get past the how to do a backstory and the well how to do a backstory, I don't really know how what what else to give you guys. So anyway, let's talk about King Coos. King Coos. Kaiser, double double. I take how much damage? So, in the world of Dungeons & Dragons, Kinkus are actually, most of the time, like little minions to other followers. But, if you are going to be role-playing a Kinku as a, well, a player, then there's some things that you need to understand. Now, there's a lot of fluff that goes into Kinkus, but I am a very, very big proprietor that if the fluff does not match what you're trying to do, follow it as closely as you can until you get to a point where you do not want to follow it anymore and i'll explain about that in just a little bit but for now the first thing i want to read to you guys is something i want you to keep in mind throughout this process is there's a little box in this book this is uh by the way this is volo's guide to monsters uh there's a little box in this book that says strictly role playing a kinku and i'm gonna read it to you now if you're playing a kinku, constant attempts to mimic noises can come across as confusing or irritating rather than entertaining. You can just as easily describe the sound your character makes and what they mean. Be clear about your character's intentions unless they're, you are deliberately aiming for inscrutable or mysterious. You might say, Snapper makes the noise of a hammer, slowly and rhythmically tapping stone to show how bored he is. He plays with his dagger and studies the Lord's Alliance agent sitting at the bar. Creating a vocabulary of noises for other players to decode might sound like fun, but it can prove distracting and can slow the game. The reason I wanted to re read that out first, before I actually tell you about how kinkus work, is because I want you guys to understand that throughout this entire video, I am going to be giving you advice that almost, almost both follows and contradicts that little section that I just read to you. So, Kinkus, like I said, are typically minions, but that's not their defining trait for when you want to play one as a character. Kinkus are oftentimes rogues, assassins, and more. Whenever they become adventurers, Kinkus will end up leaving their flock. Usually they are survivors of a flock that sustained heavy losses, or sometimes they just want to leave behind their life of crime. The one time I had a player actually roleplay a Kinku, they roleplayed one that was leaving the party when the party discovered a group of Kinku that were living in a forest. Kinku are not able to speak, or at the very least they're not able to create their own sounds. All they can do is mimic sounds that they have heard. So for example, the paragraph that I read you said that they might do the rhythmic tapping of a hammer. Uh, but other examples can be that they have things like the clacking of rocks. They can mimic the voices of other creatures, but very, very, very old kinkus who have lived for a while. Uh, in this case, kinkus live to about 60 years old. So kinkus who have lived like 50 to 60 years can use their vast amount of sounds that they've heard to barely be able to create coherent sentences. Oftentimes, whenever they are mimicking the, the, they're trying to create a sentence. So like, for example, if they're trying to say, um, my gemstone has been stolen, each word in that sentence might come from a different person that they've heard. So the word my might come from an elven lady, while gemstone might come from a dwarven warrior, and then has been might come from a baron that they encountered one time, and then stolen might come from a city guard. So they have all those different voices and inflictions going throughout that sentence. Another great example of how to use this is to attach sounds to names. So, for example, my player that roleplayed a Kinku, there was an elf in the party named Atair. A-T-A-I-R. And so, in order to call Atair's name, the Kinku player decided that they would mimic paper, the sound of paper tearing. So it would go shh, and that would tell the elf that the Kinku was trying to get their attention. So when this thing says that coming up with uh, sounds for the other players to decode might sound fun, but it can prove distracting and can slow the game down, that is true. However, I don't agree that you shouldn't do that. I think that being able to come up with different sounds for all of the other players to decode could be very immersive. However, I think that it's important when you do it. 
if the players are having a lot of downtime, let's say they're sitting in a tavern and just having general conversations, that is a great time when you can start having the other players try to figure out how the Kinku is feeling. In the middle of a battle, however, you might try to make the intentions a little bit more clear. When role-playing a Kinku, I don't want you to be locked into this criminal activity or this flock mentality because they're great, but one of the greatest things that makes adventurers so great in the worlds of Dungeons & Dragons are ones that break the mold. Perhaps the Kinku that you're playing wants to just kind of flee the nest. They don't want to do what everybody else is telling them they should do, so they go off to find bigger and better and greater things. A lot of times you might have a Kinku who is honestly just there for the fun of it. Kinkus are naturally curious creatures, not not as curious as tabaxis, but they do often like to learn things. One of the big things about Kinkus is that they have a wisdom score increase in their stat block. And the reason they have a wisdom score increase is because Kinkus learn by existing within the world. And so some Kinkus might go out into the world to learn and even to pick up more noises. Perhaps you could have a Kinku who had an elder within their flock who was able to form complete sentences. And so in order to do that, that Kinku went out into the world to learn how to do that a lot better. The point is, is that whenever you're making a Kinku, I don't want you to read this ideal minions and hopeless plagiarists and, you know, all of these other things and go, oh, wow, well, I guess I guess I got to play the Kinku assassin because that, that's all available to me and, 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 and I have to follow the party. Like, don't play... You don't have to play a Kinku who follows the party, but you can. You can. You can play a Kinku who gets their life saved by the party, and then the 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 party is uh, the 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 Kinku is indebted to the party. But don't don't you don't have to make a Kinku that just is this mindless, stupid, follows orders all the time it, it, it's 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 something that i really want you to lean into making it your own it's good to have the concept of the kinku in your mind like the being able to mimic sounds instead of actually being able to create their own noises or the fact that they are good at things like assassination and thievery and things like that like for example they get proficiencies in acrobatics deception stealth and sleight of hand but overall i just want you to understand that kinkus are not and you should not play kinkus who are just locked into this really like stupid little box expand your horizons expand your mind find ways to incorporate the fluff into the party and sometimes just break the mold of course that is all up between you and your dm but i hope that this video helped you out on role-playing a kinku uh perhaps next i will do uh how to role-play a tabaxi because i am very i love tabaxis they're my they're my <laughs> one of my favorite uh one of my favorite creatures so i hope you guys uh enjoyed today's video let me know what you think down below and as always a great big special thank you for the support that you guys have been giving me um we are very very close to being able to add channel members and then even closer uh to being able able to uh, monetize this channel altogether so that I can actually, you know, pay my bills off of this channel, which would be exceedingly wild. So thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing this with your D&D &D groups and all your D&D &D friends. I love you all so much and I will see you next one.